Hello everyone and welcome to another Amigos Play. This is Aaron and tonight I bring you the Capcom Beat-Em-Up Classic Final Fight. Uh, this came out uh, for the Amiga in 1991 published by US Gold and developed by an outfit called Creative Materials. Uh, Creative Materials did a few things that I've played and a few things I haven't played. They did the U.S. Gold versions for the Amiga of Summer Games 1 and 2, which I have played, and I thought were okay. Uh, they also did California Games 2, which I haven't played, but I'm anxious to try it. They also did the, the much maligned, oft look this crap, Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior. Uh, I fear this will be similar but we shall see. Uh, this has the classic um, intro from the arcade. I'm going to let it run here and uh, watch as the uh, Mad Gear Gang, I believe that's what they're called, threaten poor Mike Hagar and kidnap his daughter. Turn on your TV, Mike. And there he is. He looks like a crazed gang leader, that's for sure. Oh my. Jessica is a buxom lass, uh, tied up and held captive. So, uh, what's a mayor to do? Get his two uh, thug buddies to come whoop a bunch of ass and, uh, and rescue her. Uh, guy wants his girl back, and uh, Cody's along for the ride. It's funny, all these guys would later appear in uh, various fighting games. <laughs> the Street Fighter... Alpha 2 series comes to mind. I was always a big fan of Hagar. It's because I'm a wrestling fan, and he's a former pro wrestler. But, uh, uh, so we'll give him a shot first. Now, right out of the gate. Jeez, just throw you in the fire. Good God. Um, <laughs> this is gonna, might be a short Amigos play. If I, this is not a good start. It's just the... Uh, too many guys immediately on top of you. That is a bad way to start your game. Now, just looking at this, I mean, the. Uh, uh, we got a mixed bag here, don't we? Hagar looks good. It looks big. It looks, I mean, clearly they have um, taken these sprites directly from the arcade. They look dead on. So, which is good. They move a little sloppy. The backgrounds look like the arcade, but you can see the major problem is how washed out it looks, and um, it almost looks like uh, like uh, if you've had an old PC and saw the color palette of CGA. Okay, well, again, we are there's no animation going down the stairs, and we're right down in it. Here. Good lord, <laughs> it's impossible to keep these guys off. I mean, I've got to at least master one technique. I watched the little demo that shows you how to play, but it's it's sloppy. I'm glad. Hopefully, the trash cans full of ham are upstairs like they are in the arcade. Get me out of this mess. The uh, the the weird blue is that's odd to me. The guys move herky jerky, and the uh, it just feels like you're almost like an underwater. There we go. Well, I guess. He doesn't do the spinning pile driver in this. He just does the jumping pile driver, which is better than nothing. I, I see they've omitted the trash cans. I could have used those before, but I got killed anyway. All right, here's the first bad guy damned. Uh, normally in the arcade, he will jump over and sit on that stoop over there or on a dumpster or something like that, and he'll call for some buddies to come help him, so we'll see if that happens here. Uh, and there's the Andore onto the giant ripoff. Get him out of the way. That damned looks pretty good, you know, but he's not going to call anybody. And the repeated groin shots seem to be doing him in. And there he goes. Well, that was odd. Okay, they've omitted the scene that shows you what part of the city you've taken. Which is weird because in the opening that picture was there. They could have just colored it in, but picking up these weapons is gosh, it's it's real clunky. Something else that's a real bother is uh, 
the screen scroll is slow and you can't really get enough time to uh, prepare. There it was. Uh, the uh, jumping pile driver. You don't have enough room to see if anything's coming. It's, it's That's an irritating situation. And also, when you get two of these guys on you, it, as long as I've got one or two on me, it's okay. But man, yeah, this is going to be a problem. I'm dead again. Like I said, this might be a short game, y'all. I will do my best. Uh, Final Fight's a real legendary game, uh, at least here in the States. I'm assuming it was pretty popular overseas. It came out in the arcades in uh, 89. It was developed by Capcom, of course. It was on the System 1 hardware. I used to own this game, uh, the arcade version, I mean. I don't think got the subway in there, anyway. Um, the uh, System 1 hardware was good. Uh, I always heard that this was originally a, uh, going to be a Street Fighter-like game. They turned it into this uh, to uh, have a sort of a Double Dragon sort of style game in their in their uh, uh, collection. And uh, you can tell there's a lot of <laughs> it looks obviously they took this and oh, I'm shoot. Okay, well let's try another guy here. Uh, they took this and. And ran with it when the art style, I should say, when they did Street Fighter 2. Now you can see, I mean, one of the things that appealed to me when I first saw the Street Fighter series and this one was the sheer uh, care that was taken in the art. And it was quite beautiful and detailed, and they, they did a really good job and had a really interesting cast of characters. And this game has a pretty interesting cast of characters, too the various weird gang members and the cross-dressing, you know, <laughs> ch chicks and, the, <laughs> you know, some of these other guys, a lot of the stuff named after old rock bands and stuff, you know, like you've got a uh, Axel and you've got these other, you know, Common Fair, I think Capcom does that many times, actually, uh, but uh, the Amiga version here, and having played Street Fighter 2 on the Amiga, and we all can attest to the disaster that that was, this is not as bad, but it's it has that same herky jerky feel. Look, I mean, look at that guy's axle rocks up. It looks like a um, he looks like the Road Runner. His feet are just a kind of a blur. <laughs> they didn't put a lot of frames of animation in there. Okay, we're gonna. God, you get these guys on you. You can't even move. It's just like they're just <laughs> ragdolling you. You can't, you can't do anything. I really question the colors. I mean, I am baffled that the uh, that the backgrounds look so weird. I mean, I don't know where they. Obviously, the Amiga was not the original system this was ported on, but I mean, the Amiga can handle, you know, more than a. Few, you know, this is 16 colors. I mean, this is uh, ridiculous. It's really strange too. It's just get, the whole game is a real weird washed out feel but again so did street fighter so okay here's where we here's where we fight sodom sodom's another guy that ended up making his appearance in uh, uh this could be a tough fight sodom was also a guy that appeared in the uh, street fighter alpha series i dug the street fighter alpha series quite a bit i hated what they did i hated the way they changed throws in it but uh <clears throat> i enjoyed it uh, quite a bit um it's nice that you can play uh, you know, uh, uh, that you can play this game and have all access to all three of the guys. Simultaneous play, a plus. Uh, you know, so I mean, it's not the it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Yep, here we go again. We're gonna give the guy a shot here. I like guys for my second favorite guy. He's, actually, when I started playing this game, guy was my guy because I was a big kung fu movie fan. He looked like a dude straight out of one of the old martial arts flicks I used to watch. We got him. I guess we just leave the ring. <laughs> okay. Wow, no no indication as to what to do here. So we're just going to beat the hell out of this car. Again, the CGA looking car. I mean, this car, this car could have appeared in any CGA game on my Tandy back in the day. We'll beat it down. Perfect. It's a vague little message in the corner. <laughs> Again, no transition menu. You just and you're instantly you're beset by villains trying to kill you. 
There's no time to prepare. Uh, you know, the art on this looks good. Uh, the guy that did it was named Richard Applin. And ironically, he did... Uh, he did uh, Double Dragon 1 and 2. <laughs> so, no surprise there. Uh, actually, he was the coder as well. The, uh, uh, the funny thing about this game, I was doing a little research on it before I sat down to play, and uh, there's a uh, wacky message in this game. There's a couple of them, really. I guess, the, I guess Applin, when he coded this, got tired of dealing with people that were pirating the game. So he wrote a big, long message, uh, sort of berating or tongue-in-cheekly talking to people he knew that were preparing to bust the Kypertex on this game, which I've seen a few messages like that. But this is the most in-depth. I mean, this guy goes on and on and on and on and on to these uh, to these uh, crackers. I think he almost has a certain uh, respect for them in a way. Uh, but he also berates them, you know. But, I mean, it's funny to read the message. It's so long. I would read it, but it's so long. There's no way I could do it. I was playing. The uh, uh, other wacky thing in this is there's a cheat mode. And it's, uh, I believe, from the television comes on uh, on the uh, demo. If you hit the help key, I think it's five times, it'll enable this mode where you can be invincible. But before you get in it, there's a little TV screen that pops up that shows... Uh, the coder uh, in a digitized form in a TV screen, and it effectively it looks like he's trying to get dates. <laughs> he talks about how eligible he is. So, hey, at least the coder had a sense of humor. You know, this game is close too. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's not it's not a well done game, but it's it's very close. It's missing only a few key elements to being a much more playable game, um, and that the, the way the uh, the way the attacks occur, the, the way that the uh, the uh, um, guys move, and the color palette, all, it, which really those are not huge deals; they're just a little off. I mean, again, it's playable. It's playable with two people, which is sweet. That wasn't always the case. And uh, the, the sprites look really good. And the backgrounds look good. I mean, they look... Oh, here comes this guy. Uh, this guy has a gun in, in the arcade. We'll see if he pulls it out here. Because he was more than happy to pull it out in the arcade version of it. Let's see if we can beat this guy. That would be nice. The tough, the fat, southern sheriff or whatever he's supposed to be. J.W. Pepper, if you're a Bond fan. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to call this a swing and a miss. Uh, but, again, if you want your, if you want to get your Capcom on, um, and want to, you know, I guess if you, if you ponder having an Amiga when this came out, and wanting that arcade experience of playing this game, which was a popular game, I'm assuming it was popular overseas as well, um, this, you could do worse, you know? But uh, it, boy, a little bit more care given to this game, and you'd have been you'd have been laughing. I mean, it it, it was awful. It's awful good, you know, in, in, in terms of the way it looks, except for the palette. You know, I almost got this guy. Bam. Well, let's see how far I can get here. Oh man, I hate this level too. It's just a tough one. Oh, jumping. This is not going to go well. And oh wow. Well, that's it to me. <laughs> So, I was right. I didn't make it too far. Well, I'll let it go there. Uh, this is Aaron the Amigo signing off. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good night. Adios.